Hi guys, I'm Shmi, and today I'm in Germany taking a look at one of the world's, if not the world's, most luxurious, super high-powered saloon car that exists. This is the Maybach 900 Rocket. Brabus taking Mercedes S600 Maybach and turning it up another notch or two. So what we're looking at is a 900 horsepower, 1,500 newton meter, 6.3 liter twin turbo V12, monster and not only does it boast that much power performance figures that are absolutely out of this world but also an insane level of luxury and refinement starting out as the s600 my back so i'm going to show you around the car and play with all of the features on the inside we'll hear how it sounds because this thing is brutal but i'm just blown away already by what we're looking at because it is really quite something being the Brabus version, to get that power out of the engine, obviously just about everything is changed. The engine is enlarged to 6.3 litres, it has new turbos, new cooling, cooling for the air, the uh, coming in, like everything you can imagine has been changed and I'll show you under the hood in a little bit. We've also got new 21 inch wheels for this car, as well as a lowering suspension system. Brabus active exhaust system. with the badged finishes on the exhaust tips. A new lower diffuser. If I come around to the front, there is also a new splitter down here too, with the Brabus logo at the side. So let me just open it up. We'll take a quick glimpse at the interior, which is the ultimate in luxury. wait until you see the rear. That's quite a, uh, a place to be, hey? Before getting too into that, let me pop open the bonnet and show you where that power is coming from. Look at that. Carbon fibre everywhere. V12 by turbo Brabus 900, the rocket. If you want a car to sort of cruise down the autobahn at 300 kilometers an hour, not breaking a sweat, this is the one to have. Even all of the components on the underside of the bonnet are carbon fiber. True, true machine. Let's shut that back up. Right. Let's jump inside then. We have the Mercedes key. Obviously the car is keyless, so if it were locked, you would just come up to the car, put your hand behind the handle and pull it open. I'll jump inside where you're greeted by two large displays. Now, because it's pretty warm, I'm going to start it up straight away just so I can get some air conditioning blowing in my face here. So key in. You can hear the V12 there coming into life. Right, let me just mute the radio so we don't have any of that going on. Now take a look around. The steering wheel, lovely finished item different Mercedes-Benz logo to usual there, placed at the bottom inside this wood finishing. Slightly different shape to normal, but again, a steering wheel, traditional Mercedes fashion with the controls of the entertainment system and the phone and volume on that side. There are a lot of buttons and features to go through. I think one thing I'm going to show you straight away is the Burmeister audio system. So check what happens as I turn the engine back off here. They twist back in. I just think that's such a small thing, but so awesomely cool. Let's turn the engine back on again. And out they come. And they do that on all four corners of the car in the rear as well, which I'll show you in a little bit. So how best to do this, to run through everything on the interior of this car. 
because there is so much. So first up, I guess let's start, let's work left to right. Seat controls. You have an awful lot of range of movement in the seats, unsurprisingly. You can move the upper part of the base, just move absolutely everything. You've got seat cooling here. You've got the seat heating, which I'm not gonna use, it's way too hot here. You have a control here where you can enable the right seat so that from this side you can move the uh, passenger seat. You know, it's a potential chauffeur car, so you can get that seat moved forwards. Um, so you can move forward, there we go. Move forward the passenger side. Um, then you've obviously got your standard sort of memory settings. As we come down here, you've got the door lock and unlock. Um, usual controls for windows. That's probably the most normal part here, the windows and the mirror controls and then folding the mirrors at the top. They fold slightly upwards. Then we come around here, we've got a series of the sort of safety systems. Well, firstly, we've got the electronic handbrake down underneath and the light control. But here we've got all the sort of steering assistance, lane assistance, park, um, turning off your park sensors, the 360 degree camera, night vision, um, awareness of cars in front of you. So uh, let's just put the 360 degree camera on, which brings up a sort of top down style view of where the car is, which is based using cameras sort of looking out all around us, as well as the um, background view. And using this end control system, you can actually bring up any particular view you want to see um, full size. Um, on the left you've got the cruise control stalk and up top you've got your usual lights on that stalk and wipers and the like. Um, the, the dash in front of us, so you do have these two ginormous screens. Um, this one is customised with a new Brabus skin of course with the Brabus logo. Um, speedometer at the left, rev counter to the right, um, fuel gauge down here. You can choose what the central display is controlling, so for example if I go on this system down to Navi it will bring up um, a map view or destinations depending what you've uh, what you've got set. You've got the sort of warning lights along top along with the temperature and your gear selector indicator is right above the oil temperature there on the right hand side. So as we come across here, here you've got a single one press button to raise and lower the rear headrest. So you can I say that, but what's happening? There we go. So you can raise and lower them in advance of your clients getting into the car. Put them back down for easier view out of the back. Then underneath that you have the button for the rear blind. So you can pull that down and back up. Then continuing around, on this side you've got the gear selector, which is of course down for drive up for reverse, press the button on the end for park, just above the central piece with the four air vents and the IWC clock in the centre, with the air conditioning controls underneath it, all sorts of settings. You can do just about anything you can imagine with the air conditioning in this car. Um, here we've got a tray that comes out with a 12 volt plug and just a, a small storage tray. We've got, well actually I should show the Maybach logo on the wood panel here, that slides in, you've got a CD slot here and an eject button and a little shelf or you can fold that up and you've got a, a bigger storage box there in the centre. Fold that back down, bring the cover back up. Then you've got the controls for the uh, entertainment system. Uh, well firstly you've got your massaging seats for, well, press the button and it brings up um, the massaging seat controls on the entertainment system and you can go through the different kind of controls and trust me there's just so much you can do on there it's insane and then you've got the shortcuts for navigation radio media and telephone which are all more or less as you would expect um, oh, we've even got the television um, then you've got uh, return this button here S or E is for the gearbox you can see just on that right hand side economy or sport modes um, then you've got the active body control, sport or comfort, which is all to do with, I guess, the comfort drive through corners. A lifting system, so we can lift the car up. And let me see if I can try this.
not entirely sure if you can see it, but the car is rising up there. Quite a strange sensation, actually. Put it back down. There we go. Back down we go. Um, and I'm not sure if you can quite see, but there's also a head-up display in front of us with the sort of basic useful information. On the right-hand side, you have the screen on or off, volume control, and the button for automatic start-stop. Then in the centre here, you have the two pieces of control system for the um, uh, entertainment system and everything to do with it and this is like a, a touchpad you can sort of write on it and it will recognize what you're um, what you're trying to input um, or if you just swipe across it will go between modes as well that's done just by swiping like this across the top um, or you can just rotate the lever underneath as you like so there's a whole load of settings and things you can go through with that next up on the center console is this storage box which has a button on either side it does actually open from the other side too, although that means we can't see anything with the MyBack logo on the top there. And inside here, you've got uh, USB inputs, um, media input, I'm not quite sure if you can see that in the sunlight, and just general storage. You could fit a pen or something in there. So, that is most of what we've got in the front. <laughs> it's a pretty long list, isn't it? Let's take a look at the seat. You can see nicely quilted leather, um, perforated for the cooling and heating. Uh, there's a little V12 badge here, which is cool, just reminds you. Um, and all the same sort of controls over on the other side. But all of the small details, even down to the locking sort of spring up the side, are all very, very nicely finished in the front here. Up top, um, we've got another set of controls. We've got some speakers up here, actually, there, and just above us in the rear. Um, so sound system in here is truly outstanding. Um, you've got your sort of assist kind of controls um, and alarm controls. Um, as well as the lights for the car, uh, all LEDs, um, driver's reading light. Uh, not coming on right the second, maybe I pressed something wrong, but uh, we've also got these two for the sunroof. So let's open the roof, which you do by going that way. And you can see it's a very, very blue view at the moment. That's because it has the electronic sort of um, system where it's sort of automatically kind of tinted, if you will. And if you press this button once, you can see it opens up and then you're out to the sky. Press it again and it will close. Um, so that is seriously funky. Love that kind of tech. Close the sunroof down and then close the shutter blind afterwards. Um, usual kind of garage door buttons, home link stuff, and all the sort of automatic sensors and detectors you would anticipate on a car like this. I'm gonna jump into the back now. I'm gonna go around to the other side actually. Goodness me. So much to talk about. My back badge right there, really nice, just behind the windows. And the 900 badge being at the Brabus. So let's take a look here in the back then. You step over, over the Brabus door sills. Obviously the same kind of layout and structure we've seen in the front. With a lot of space. There is no shortage of leg room in front of me back here. And a lot more to run you through. Let's start up here, so the speaker or the sub or whatever it is up here. We've got the small vanity mirrors. See me filming. We've got lights and controls on the door, on the um, grab handles up there. Now obviously you've got a, we've got a screen in front of us, display screen, you can turn that on. Um, that will sort of mirror what you have up front, which can all be controlled through a remote and it's exactly the same system as the uh, central system up in the front. On the door, you have a number of different controls. You obviously also have the uh, heating and cooling. So I can put the cooling seat on. You have this button that allows you to control the seat in front. So being a chauffeur car, you can therefore open up extra legroom. And you have this button, which makes the seat go flat. So what that does is it will bring up the footrest underneath me. For my lower legs, it will bring out the footrest from in front um, and lower my seat flat. And as you can see, it's sort of in a little um, booth rather like a kind of plane seat so it will go all the way down to a flat position um, and then just your memory seats as well down there in the center you have the air vents um, with a nice control to open and close all the uh, digital buttons again replicating the layout of the front um, automatic or manual or all sorts of different things as you like more of the lovely wood trim up through the center slide this piece forward and you have to cup holders, not just any cup holders. These are cup holders with cooling or with heating. So if you've got a coffee, keep it warm. If you've got a Coke, keep it cold. 
um, and a storage box right behind that. <laughs> I think that's quite cool, quite a neat little thing. And you've got another little compartment here with two 12 volt sockets and this, which is a phone handset. Show you this, nice little thing. You connect it to your phone, which could be in your pocket, um, and it literally works like a standalone handset. Or if you turn it on, um, done by pressing the button, sorry, this is the button. Um, you have a number of controls, set up the Bluetooth, go to the seat, um, and you can use, you can set up your sort of rear massaging seats and that kind of stuff. Um, all sorts of different modes, left seat or right seat, depending what you want. Move the seat around, turn on massage, start it, deal with all the settings, um, reset the seats, head back. You've got a few more settings for the device itself, because obviously this is a handset, it has a microphone at the bottom and a speaker at the top. Uh, so you can use it like a phone, go through your contacts and stuff. So that's a fun little thing, feature. Pop that back in there, clicks in and slides away. Behind that you have the armrest, again with the MyBack embossed logo. We'll open this up and in here you can see firstly the tables, I'll get that out in a second, more USB and input con options um, and these metal tables which open up like so. You open it, fold it down, open the second half of the table and twizzle it so it's out in front of you. So a nice rubber grippy surface and a sort of blocking piece at the bottom to stop it, stop anything sliding off. So you can get on with your work while you're in the car. That works quite well. Complicated process, but not, not unnatural at all. Just tucks away on both sides. Fold the armrest back down. And above that, surrounded by this nice wooden trim, you have an upper armrest with a fridge in it. This is a fridge cool box. Can fit three bottles. Um, very stylish if you ask me. It does eat up some of the boot space though. I might show you that shortly. Um, there's a CD slot right above that here. But back here, super comfortable. Just look at the luxury, like even down to the cushions on the headdress. You can actually bend in the headdress so that they sort of hold you supported if you want to sleep. Um, obviously we've got the uh, cooling and everything and it's believably luxurious. Right the way down to every sort of fit and finish is marvelous, absolutely marvelous in here. This is, this is ultimately stylish and a fantastic, fantastic place to be. Um, I haven't played with this. Oh, it's probably just a light, my bad. <laughs> I'm desperate to find buttons, because um, as well as that, we've also got these, which do the rear sunroof. Similar setup. Got the, uh, that, and then you press it again and open up the full glass roof. Um, I'm pressing too quickly, let's... There we go, darken it all again. That's just crazy and close that back up um, but very neat um, what else do we have this other button next to it is the rear blind goodness me sorry there is so much to play with in here um, I'm like a kid in a toy shop um, I'm loving this um, let me quickly run around I'll turn off my uh, cooling seat quickly run around show you the boot you can see what the um, fridge does to boot space. Obviously it's an automatic boot. The fridge sort of sits there in the middle, so it does impact the boot a little bit. If you want massive boot space, you wouldn't want to order the fridge system. It's not too bad. So, what's left to show you? Well, I think one of the most important things is to actually hear now from the outside and from the inside how this car actually sounds. Um, because as well as all this luxury and comfort, it's not a bad sounding car. So we're in park. We've got the active exhaust and the way you control that is with the up and down buttons here. If you press and hold, it's already open. If you press and hold down, it will close. Double beat to say the exhaust is closed and so now we're in valve closed mode. So it's loud, but it's not obnoxious. Exhaust open.
So that is one insane vehicle. Let's shut it off. I absolutely love this. Imagine going on like a long drive or even just being daily driven or chauffeured in one of these. What a stunning piece of machinery and just made even better by the extra performance from the Brabus kit and the uh, styling pack that comes with it. Mind is blown. What a fantastic car. So what else can I show you around the outside? You've got the uh, infrared system for the cruise control. You've got the cameras that help control the uh, 3D, um, sorry, the 360 degree view. The other cameras for that are based here on the underside of the door mirrors. But this is a machine, an absolute machine. So yeah, I apologize. That was quite a long uh, run through of all the features of this car, but there was so much to show you. And to me, I just wanted to get playing and get pressing the buttons and see everything myself. So I've been able to now have that opportunity here, thanks to Brabus, uh, but that is a machine. I've said it, I've said it a lot. I love this thing so much. Wouldn't it be amazing to do a trip or something just cruising around in that? Anyway, thank you very much for having the patience to watch the video. And uh, I hope you subscribe and check out everything else I've been shooting with Brabus here today. That's it for right now though. I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers. Uh -huh.